Greetings and welcome to Hacking Made Easy with Hands-On Training. I'm Professor K. I will be your instructor for the entire course and I just want to take a moment to welcome you and go over a few things to help make this one of the best courses you've ever taken on Udemy, which is my primary goal. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to do a course overview. We're going to talk about why it's so important to complete Section 01 before you sign up or pay for the course. Very important. Setting up our virtual lab environment, we'll discuss that and we'll talk about how to get the most from this course. Alright, so why is Module 01 so important? It's because it is the cornerstone or the foundation for everything that follows. If you cannot create a virtual lab environment for this course, then you won't be able to do any of the lab work. This course is 100% hands-on. There's no lecture. There's no death by PowerPoint. There's none of that going on in here. I do a video tutorial for the most part, and then you do a lab, and that's called Task Conditions and Standards. I show you how to do it. I'm going to give you the standard, and then you're going to complete the task, and that's how you're going to learn how to hack like a pro. That's how you do it. You don't do it by reading lectures. You don't do it by watching PowerPoints or watching somebody else to do it. You got to get your hands dirty and get in there and actually do the work. That's how it works. All right. So this course, again, is 100% hands-on. I encourage you to take it slow and easy. Don't try to blow through the course. All you're going to do is end up with epic failure. This course is not designed for the easy path to be learn to learn how to hack it's actually designed that you're going to have to apply yourself come into the course with the right attitude the right equipment the right hardware and software and you will have great success if you try to blow through the course you're you're, you're not going to have much fun all right you'll be contacting me every five minutes saying hey the lab didn't work the lab didn't work the lab didn't work then I'll show you that the lab did work, and then you're just going to keep going around in circles. Usually by the time students get through the first two to three modules, and once they complete the first two to three modules, then they're fine. If you're new to Linux, if you're new to virtualization, if you're new to hacking, then at least the first three units, that's going to be your foundation. And if you can get past that, then suddenly... The sky clears, everything becomes crystal bright, and you're suddenly understanding exactly how it is you work with the CLI in a Linux program such as Kali. All right, so watch the videos and then read the lab from the start to finish. It's very important, very important. Do not skip through the labs. If you skip one step, you will end in epic failure. If you have questions or you have problems, you call or you post, and I will help you. I can remote into your machine if you want. All we got to do is just download TeamViewer, and I can come into your machine. I can help you set up your lab environment. I can help explain how the lab is supposed to work. I can go through every step with you in a live one-on-one -on -one environment if you need me to. All right, set up the virtual lab environment. We're going to do one install of virtual, a virtual install of Kali Linux, a virtual install of Windows XP, Server 2008, and Linux Metasploitable 2. What's the big emphasis on these old operating systems? Well, they may be old, but they're still very prevalent. There's probably 85% of all organizations in the world are still running some instance of Windows XP somewhere on their organization. And it's, a, it's done for a number of reasons. One is they can't get past the Windows XP because of legacy software, legacy hardware requirements. They may have a piece of software that cost them forty or fifty thousand dollars twenty or thirty years ago, proprietary, and if they want to upgrade it to Windows 7 or 8 or 10, it's going to cost them probably sixty, a hundred thousand dollars now to have that old program rewritten for 64-bit hardware. What's the difference if they just leave it on the Windows XP machine, stick it in a corner somewhere, and allow it to run? Same with Server 2008. Same with Server 2003.
those programs, those operating systems are still very prevalent today. So don't fool yourself into thinking that everybody's running Windows 10 or 8 or Server 2016. They're not. All right. CPU and BIOS capable of hardware virtualization. Very important. This is another reason why you've got to complete Module 01 before you pay for the course. I don't want you to pay for the course and then have to have a refund. 01, Module 01 is available to anyone. You don't have to pay for the course. It's it's full preview. You set up your lab environment. See how easy it is to get all those virtual machines built, and then you start using the emulation program of your choice, whether it be VirtualBox, VMware, or whatever. And then you can then sign up for the course, and you'll have a blast. I guarantee you will have a great time. So, yes, we can use emulation programs um, VMware, VirtualBox, Hyper-V, and others, right? It all depends on what you want to do or how proficient you are with virtualization. But I take you through it step by step with videos and labs with lots of pictures so you don't have to worry about that part of the setup. All right, so this is VMware. This is the primary emulation program we'll be using. It comes in two different versions. You've got the free version, and then you've got the Workstation 14 Pro, which is the latest version they have on the market right now. This program normally costs about $250 if you get the Pro version. If you go with the free version, it doesn't cost you anything. They both are exactly the same thing, except that the Pro version has a few more features, such as being able to take a snapshot and cloning and some other things. VMware Player, though, is more than sufficient for this course. VirtualBox for Mac and some Windows users is the other option. All right, so VirtualBox is free open source emulator. It's made by IBM. You can go out, you can download it, and you can put it on your Mac machine, and you can do the same thing as a Windows user for a that is using VMware. All right, and some Windows users that are running Windows 10 may have to use VirtualBox because of some compatibility issues with their service or their security suite and or some type of update with Windows. All right, so this is what your virtual environment is going to look like. It's going to look like a Windows XP or Server 2008 running, Linux Metasploitable 2, and Kali VM as your attack machine. you got to have at least two of these up and running to be able to complete a lab, depending on what the lab is. If it's Windows XP, you got Kali and XP. If it's just Server 2008 or Metasploitable, there you go. The importance of buy-in. Buy-in is what you bring to the course, and I hope that you will bring enough hardware and RAM to meet the requirements, all right? So let's see about that. The RAM that you're going to need for this course is going to be at least 4 gigs. I recommend that you have at least 8 and preferably 16, okay? So, but if you have any questions or you have any concerns about anything we've discussed in this overview of the course, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor. I am always in the course rooms. I'm up there every day. I'm, I'm checking my messages, and I get right back with you. If you have a problem, and I think I can better explain it with a video, I will create a short video, and I will post it up on the Internet, and I will send it to you so that you get your question answered as best as possible and as quickly as possible. Again, I hope you sign up for my course, and if you have any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Talk to you later. Bye.